My name is uh, Leho. Uh, I'm from PCS Etera, from, uh, from Estonian part, and that's why we are talking uh, today in English. My Finnish is not so good yet, but, um, but I hope everybody can understand. So, what we are going to talk today, uh, my goal is to cover like a brief overview about licenses and different uh, usage models of Business Central. I know the licensing uh, question is always quite complicated. If uh, if you have never like uh, uh, never heard about it uh, before, so it it gets quite complicated. And if even if you listen to this webinar, I believe after right after this webinar, you're gonna have uh, quite a many additional questions. But um, at least I try to give it the first uh, first input. So you, if you want to go more into detail, then it's totally okay. Then we can help you. So uh, what can what uh, concerns questions? If you have any questions, I believe on the right side of um, your display you should have like a small console and there is a, a window for questions. If you have any questions, just right right here and i try to answer them on the run please uh, ask in english again if possible if not just write in finnish here and i will answer later after the webinar so let's start with the with the topics about licenses so uh if you have like an interest in in business central and you are thinking about going for the business central and then one uh, question, uh, if, if you calculate your investments, are the licenses. So I, I uh, give you a short overview what you have to consider when, uh, when buying uh, or renting or however you're going to do it, do that, uh, these business center licenses. There are like a three topics concerning licenses. There are functional packages you have to choose between. Uh, I'm going to stop on functional packages right after a couple of slides. Additionally, there are also different types of users you have to choose between. And, uh, and uh, for the third point, there are possible additional functionality modules or functionalities or little solutions or however they call it. So let's start with the first one. There are two functional packages. If you're going for business rental, you have to choose between two functional packages. It's quite easy, actually. I'm going to show you. There are packages called essentials and premium. I have never translated them in no, not into the Estonian, not Finnish, and we are always using English uh, words. So essentials, what essentials means? Uh, essentials mean that there is uh, separately financial management module. And uh, we can call it also bookkeeping, but Microsoft calls it financial management. And uh, financial management uh, has um, quite a many sub-modules. Uh, sub of course, there is a general ledger, what is uh, the base for everything, if we're talking about uh, uh, bookkeeping. But there are also different, uh, more additional additional modules. For example, quite a, quite a often uh, customers ask, uh, do you have budgets or financial budgets? Yes, in Business Central under the financial module there are budgets, financial budgets. You can create your budgets, you can export them to Excel, fill them in the Excel, and then import back to the uh, Business Central. You can compare the budgets with the actual numbers and so on. So there are budgets. Uh, for example, also there is a consolidation. So if you have many companies or you are international uh, company, then you definitely need consolidation. And uh, financial management also in business center means that you have consolidation. We have done uh, quite a many consolidation projects and uh, I would say that uh, business center consolidation covers most, most requirements, even, even very complicated ones. We have uh, like a big customers who have uh, very complicated consolidation models all over the different countries and uh, uh, till now Business Central uh, have handled them all. So, and 
And uh, one, one thing uh, quite often customers ask, okay, you have financial module, you have bookkeeping and everything, but what about fixed assets? Some way uh, bookkeepers, they think, uh, or they consider that fixed assets is something out of financial. But yes, we have, we have quite, a, quite a good financial uh, who, who, um, fixed assets module, what is also under financial management. So financial management is the pace of, of the business central. And uh, if I look uh, at our customers, then I can say 99.5% of our customers, they all, all use uh, financial module and bookkeeping module. Only some of very specific solutions we have, they don't use financial module. So what else uh, in business central essential module? Uh, there is a customer relationship management, the magic word CRM. Uh, very often customers ask, do you have CRM? And then I always ask back, what do you mean by CRM? But uh, B CRM in Business Central, actually, uh, I would div divide it like uh, into two parts. One part is like um, keeping information about your customers or or about your potential customers. You can make segments uh, of customers, for example, divide some customers into, I don't know, big customers, small customers, uh, good customers, bad customers, and so on. And according to this differentiation, you can make your marketing. You can send out emails, you can send out marketing messages and so on. But the true meaning of CRM usually is management of uh, of sales projects or potential sales projects or sales, sales projects for your uh, existing customers also. This functionality also is included in this CRM uh, module. So finance, CRM, what else? Project management. Project management is meant for the companies who are doing business based on the project logic. You, for example, construction companies or, uh, or uh, yeah, construction companies is the be best example. Uh, you make uh, you make uh, budget for that uh, for your project, and after that you have have to keep track of your budget. You have to compare incomes versus outcomes. You have to compare is is your uh, project task line is on the time or is it time is deadline is passed and this kind of details. This for uh, for that we use project management. And uh, and uh, most of companies, like I said, most of companies using financial module. Most of companies using also uh, sub module from supply chain management. Supply chain management actually consists many functionality and business areas. The easiest way to differentiate it is uh, like it's sales, it's purchase, it's inventory. Sales and purchase, I believe it's quite a clear. Inventory can be in business central, it can be solved in more complex way and in more easier way. Um, and uh, usually we call it in business central, there are inventory and there is a warehouse management system. Inventory is actually, it's a simple inventory calculation. Uh, you, if you purchase something, uh, the products appear in your, uh, in your warehouse, you sell them, they <laughs> like disappear from warehouse. But there is more complicated uh, way to manage your warehouse. It's called warehouse management system. And it means that you have like a large, uh, large warehouse in means of like a square meters. You have many, many uh, products, thousands or tens of thousands, and you have to keep track of them. So you have different zones inside your warehouse. Uh, you have shelf uh, system, you have other system and everything like that. It's more meant to bigger wholesale companies or logistic companies or even bigger production companies who are using warehouse management system. And uh, finally, there are some additional modules also. So this was the essentials uh, package. Uh, and the second package is premium package, as I mentioned, essentials and premium. And premium package is actually consists of two business processes. I list them here at once. One, one is service. So if you do service, for example, you sell, you sell computers, 
and uh, you offer also service for this computer afterwards you make contracts service contracts and so on for that we use uh, service module and manufacturing or production however you call it it's included in premium uh, package to make it more complex i i will go back to the inventory part or supply chain management and here you can see um, one sub module it's called assembly management what is included in essentials package assembly is actually we call it like it's like a light production uh, in easiest way to explain it it's um, if you take for example three products and you produ produce from these three products one product you can add labor cost there but uh, finally one uh, new product comes out it's actually assembly management and it's can it can be done with this essential package but if you expect a more detailed and complicated and advanced uh, approach to manufacturing then you definitely need premium package and uh, all these modules what are included here for example capacity management and uh, production planning and and work centers and machine centers and things uh, routings and uh, things like that then you need manufacturing so all in all comparison of two uh, two functional packages as i mentioned uh, for me it seems quite easy to choose between essentials uh, includes finance purchase sales and so on and premium ads uh, for these finance purchase sales ads production and service so you only need premium package when you are a production company or service company all other types of companies uh, can be sold with essential package so that was the first thing the functional package next thing users so again uh, uh, it's not so easy maybe but uh, i can uh, explain uh, as as simple as possible you have full users full users are users who can do everything in this system in this business center of course user rights apply so if you are sales sales guy you are doing uh, uh, invoices on daily basis uh, but uh, you can't access to financial data you can't uh, access to balance sheet for example but you are a full user you can do most of uh, other tasks then there are limited users or team members um, uh, and they are a little bit different depending which kind of license model you have is it like a subscription or a cloud model but uh, the main idea is that these users are uh many times cheaper than full user and they only do very specific tasks in business central for example they can access to all data they can read all data of course again user rights apply but uh, they can enter very limited uh, data in specific uh, places in business center for example they can create new uh, new sales uh, offers or sales quotes but they can't post documents into the general ledger, this, this kind of users. Uh, and the third one is uh, the new, newest, um, newest user type is device user. If we talk about full user and limited or team member, then we are talking about named users. Named user means that if you, for example, you have five persons, in your company who has to access business central then they all have to have either either full user or either limited user or team member but device user is meant it's like a connected with one uh, physical device and as you can see these scenarios uh, are brought out is it point of sale for example you are selling you are uh, selling uh, goods for retail uh, from uh, business central then for example in the morning time there is uh, uh, working one person and in the evening time the second person then you don't have like have two separate licenses then you uh, can have only one device user and this device user is connected with the guy who is working in the morning and the guy or the girl who is working uh, in the afternoon 
or there are different more scenarios shop floor for example in the production you have to report what you have done how many how many pieces you have produced or how long it took uh, this uh, production but this can be used also device user you have one computer in production hall and everybody comes there and reports or warehouse device uh, also can use device user so you have you have users and you have functional packages and this is what uh, what microsoft offers for you this is like a standard part so I have one question here. The question is, can we mix uh, premium and essential packages? I believe you meant that uh, if you meant that if we, for example, our production company, many customers have asked this before me. Also, uh, if we have like a production company, can like a five persons buy buy premium package and uh, 10 persons can buy essential package the answer is unfortunately no if you are a production company then all your users must be premium users if you don't need the production then all your users are essential users you can't mix these packages okay so let's move on these are uh, what microsoft offers two packages functional packages and two users now we are going to for uh, additional modules. Uh, additional modules are actually what is not done by Microsoft. It's done by uh, usually by your 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 own partner or, or other partners. I will switch to I will switch to I will check where I have this. Aha, I have it here. I will switch to uh, Internet Explorer or Chrome, and here is you can see appsource.microsoft.com, and actually this is the place uh, where Microsoft keeps his, uh, his new apps. I, I will explain a little bit what this app means. If you have used Navision or Dynamics Nav before, then I believe you have you are familiar with the term uh, development. If you wanted something. Uh, additional to standard functionality partners usually develop that for you especially nowadays they call it apps or extensions it's uh, it's additional functionality on top of microsoft standard uh, package so uh, and uh, for these apps now microsoft also has store it's um, quite a um, same concept like uh, mobile phones have. If you buy iPhone or a Samsung phone or whatever, uh, I can say that, okay, for a new phone, I can maybe make calls, I can send SMSs, uh, and I can surf in the internet. But uh, if you want to make, uh, if you want to do some sport and count your steps or count your calories, then you usually go into the App Store or however these stores are called, and you download Endomondo or something like that. So the very similar concept is now also in Business Central. If you want something additional, you go to App Store, you choose apps and search for apps. For example, let's take Finvoice, what all Finnish companies use because standard Business Central doesn't have, and voila. And you can uh, you can see that there is a ready product already module for this fin, fin voice already existing uh, in Microsoft App Store. If you are using cloud solution, you can download it uh, here and uh, start using it at once. Otherwise, you have to connect contact with your with your partner and uh, and he's uh, taking uh, care how you can use this fin voice. And uh, I come back here. We have for the Finnish market as PCS Etera, we have different modules with what we can offer factoring. Uh, we have expense reports, uh, dimension corrector, uh, contract management, uh, real time bank. Real time bank is not released yet, but it will be. Uh, and uh, you can find them all in this app source. So if you want additional modules, you can just go to the app source and download them uh, or ask your partner to find a specific module for you. So the first thing uh, about licenses then was 
functional modules, you have to choose either essentials or premium. Then users, you have to count uh, what kind of users you need, how many you need them, and what kind of types you need them. And then also consider if you need some extra functionality. It can be found from App Source or your partner will develop it uh, for you specially. And now I made one uh, quite easy example. Let's say that we have a wholesale company who uses these uh, ordinary processes, finance, purchase, sales, inventory, and e-invoices. There will be approximately 10 users plus, uh, plus manager who approves uh, invoices. And what kind of uh, licenses you have to buy? At first, you have to buy 10 business essentials named users. Essentials because all these uh, purchase sales inventory are covered in essentials module. And for manager who is only doing approval, then for them is uh, one cheaper license, it's team member or limited user, however you call it. And uh, for the, as you are Finnish company, you need Finvoice, then additionally also Finvoice module. So all in all, you this kind of license configuration you should buy. Uh, from your partner. Okay, and if we are co now we are going to talk about uh, different usage models. And uh, the last thing I have here, server rent or purchase, it's also relate related with uh, usage models. And I will explain it a little bit more in detail on next slides. So there are three different uh, ways to purchase Business Central. The first thing, the uh, first option, it's a buyout. Or if you talk with your partner or if you talk uh, with Microsoft, they very often use term on-premise or on-prem. But it's actually buyout and it's historically most popular one. All the customers who are now already years and years on, uh, on Business Center or Navision platform, they are all buyout buyout option. That means customer purchases license. So they are paying one-time fee for this license. And after that, every year they pay annual enhancement fee. This enhancement fee means that uh, uh, it gives you the right to get newest versions. It's an annual fee, what every customer who has bought a uh, uh, license has to pay. And usually if we're talking about IT infrastructure, then Business Central usually then is situated in customers own server, or they have partner for that, uh, then they, uh, this Business Central sits on partner server or infrastructure. Second option, it's a renting licenses. Again, if you're talking about Microsoft partner or you talk about Microsoft, then they can call it subscription. Uh, and it's quite similar to the first one, but uh, you don't like a pay one-time fee for the licenses, but you rent uh, licenses. So it means you pay monthly fee for licenses, and this uh, fee is already including enhancement fee. Uh, in the first option, you have to pay annually this fee, but in rent or subscription option, you don't have to be. Uh, you don't have to pay anything extra for to get newest versions. And what concerns infrastructure is the very similar the first one. Usually, Business Central is situated on your own server or on your service provider server. So, and now we are moving to the third option. Is <clears throat> the newest one. It's the cl called cloud, business center cloud. And again, if you're talking about who is the partner or you are talking with Microsoft, they very often use term SaaS, what means software as a service. And, and it's a little bit similar to the rent. You pay monthly fees for the license, uh, but uh, all everything what is related with infrastructure Everything with related here, hardware, software, it's managed by Microsoft. You don't have to know anything about it. That's the beauty of the cloud. You don't have to know anything what is 
uh, in the background of the solution to run it, uh, to make make able to run it. So, so uh, there are <coughs> three options, buyout, rent and cloud. Now I'm going to make a little comparison. Uh, what are the differences of these models? The first one, as I always already mentioned, the server. With the on-premise and subscription or buyout and rent, uh, usually the server is your in your own office or your uh, partner's uh, place. And, uh, and uh, in the case of cloud, the server is somewhere somewhere in the cloud. Uh, for the Finnish and Estonian uh, cloud, uh, cloud, I believe it's situated actually in Netherlands or in Ireland, somewhere there. But in, in the cloud, and you don't have to worry actually where it is. Is it in, in Ireland or, or, uh, or in Netherlands? The fee for the server. Uh, with the two first options, you have to consider that it's extra investment. Uh, with the on-premise, you usually also pay one-time fee for the server, uh, hardware and software. In subscription or rental, there can be different models. I put there a little asterisk, as you see here. Um, as you see here, and that means that sometimes partners offer like a ready package. Uh, you pay some 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 money, and uh, this already includes licensing and also server. But in theory, uh, in rental model, you have to consider also with separate fee for the server. In the cloud, there is no uh, separate fee for the server. It's included in license price, in monthly fee. A little bit technical nuance. For the, um, uh, to run Business Central, you need database server license and it's Microsoft SQL license. With the on-premise and subscription, this uh, is SQL license is not included in license, uh, business central license fee. And like with the uh, server, you have to consider as it additional investment, additional cost. With the cloud, you don't, as I mentioned, you don't have to know anything. What is technical background? It's included in monthly fee and it works. Next thing, automatic updates. CU means cumulative update. Uh, it's um, fixing errors for updates for fixing errors and new versions would come out uh, two times per year in the springtime and in the autumn. With the two first options, usually it is separate work and the partner will do it as separate work and it will be invoiced separately. That means you, as the customer, you have to consider with additional additional cost for that. In the cloud, it's included in monthly fee. Again, I have small asterisks here behind, and this small asterisk means that if your solution, what is situated in the cloud, has many, many, many additional modules, that means customer-specific modules, uh, there can be need for some testing from partner side to test if your own modules are uh, are uh, are working in the new version. But it's not uh, it's not so so much work. Um, then a li little nuance again: what some customers don't know and they don't use it. It's possibility to change number of users. Of course, all customers can do that, but some customers, for example, in the summertime when they have uh, vacation periods, maybe uh, these people who are on vacation, they don't need licenses and they don't access to business center at all. So in rental, subscription and cloud model, they can change the number of users on monthly basis. So if, if the July is vacation period, at the end of June, you say to your partner, please, please exclude five users from my configuration and you pay less for five users. Or with the on-premise or buyout license, it's not possible. At the beginning, you bought 10 licenses and 10 licenses you have all the time. 
Uh, enhancement fee. As I mentioned, enhancement fee is the fee uh, what customers pay to get new newest versions. And uh, with the on-premise or buyout, it's a 16% from license value per year. So if you paid, for example, 10,000 euros for licenses, you bought your license, 10,000 euros, then every year you pay 1,600 euros to have the right to go to the newest version. And little remark, this uh, 1,600 euros doesn't include, doesn't include uh, the works for a version upgrade. It will be done separately, as I mentioned already here. Partner will do a separate work. And uh, already I mentioned on um, previous slide, payment for licenses, if you buy out, it's a one-time investment plus annual enhancement fee payments, but in rental and cloud option, then it's monthly payments. So I have a couple of more technical, more technical nuances. I will bring them here also. It's data database size limit. If you have the solution on your own server or partner server, then in theory, there is no limit for the database size because you have to just add one more, uh, one more maybe uh, hard disk or uh, increase the size of some kind of uh, space where you keep your database. But in cloud, there is a theoretical, uh, theoretical limit. It's 80 gigabytes again. Here is a small asterisk, and this asterisk means that actually it's theoretical um, limitation. If your database will grow to 90 gigabytes, it's actually possible. You just have to pay for extra 10 gigabytes to the Microsoft. So that's that's the that's the details with that limitation. And access to a SQL database, it's very technical, but I will go through it quickly. You, you have direct access to the, the SQL database with on-premise and subscription uh, usage model, but in the cloud, you have separate tools to access to SQL database. And if you talk in like a human language, that means if you, if you are a bigger company, and usually bigger companies, at least in Estonia, they using data warehouse for the analysis uh, purposes. And the data warehouse needs direct access to SQL. So in the cloud, at the moment, there is no possibility to create data, data warehouses. Uh, I believe in the future releases, it will be available, but at the moment, no. So that was the comparison of three models. How, what are the differences between on-premise, buyout, rental subscription or cloud version. And uh, what usually is they say, which option to choose, then, uh, then uh, I believe there are pluses or minuses for both options, either to go on-premise or the cloud. With the on-premise, there are like uh, more, uh, more hidden costs. You have to take care of uh, power, cooling, security, and so on. In, in case of cloud, these all are already included in, in the cloud uh, monthly fee. It's situated some in some data server uh, center somewhere in Ireland or whatever, uh, and you don't have to worry about it. So it's, it's a mindset question, I believe, which one to choose. And the for the final, um, I would like to share one Excel table. I just made here um, one easy example i took uh, random numbers for 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 investment for example i have some 10 or 20 users uh, when i go for the on premise or buyout i will do first year i will do uh, the initial uh, payment but with the subscription and cloud i will pay on monthly basis and as you can see i will scroll it a little bit i will do it a little bit bigger as you as you can see here, okay, here, the blue line is on premise. Uh, the subscription uh, is the gray one, and the yellow one is cloud. And if you look at these uh, calculations, it seems like from the third year, cloud is going to be uh, much more expensive. But one disclaimer: these costs are only license costs. Here are no not included hardware, 
or software. It's not included uh, maintenance. You have to maintenance your uh, your servers. It's not included version upgrades. And as I showed you this uh, iceberg picture, actually all these hidden costs, they are not included in these prices. So if you take like, a, if you want to buy out the license, you need server. Let's, let's increase the uh, first initial investment with some thousands. You see that uh, this uh, line moves and it's uh, this uh, buyout already gets more more uh, more expensive and if i add this all these costs here i i believe the break even point will be for fifth or sixth year somewhere you have to make version upgrades you add this cost also somewhere let's add let's add here you have to do this calculation for all these all these details and only after that you can calculate the total cost of ownership for your solution and decide is it go for the cloud or to go to on-premise or to go to rental or subscription. Uh, I just encourage you to look all your costs and uh, make uh, compare all these models and only after that make the decision either to go for the cloud or to go to, for a rental or to go, go for the on-premise or buyout. So uh, that's more or less, that's all. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, our, our, our Finnish uh, office manager, Marika, is more than happy to take your calls or your emails. And, but if you have any direct questions to me, feel free to uh, send me an email. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. See you next time. Bye-bye.